So, I figured that six months should probably be enough time, even if I work full time, <laughs> to create the first prototype of a simple turbidity sensor. Now, if you recall, I have been trying to create this super impressive thing with an RTC module in order to have the sensor logging in the field with a pressure, temperature, and turbidity sensor with an additional temperature sensor in order to account for temperature drift on the RTC module and with soldered joints because I love to make my life extra difficult and with an Arduino Nano because I just love a challenge of trying to solder pieces onto these little, little joints right here. So then I threw that thing out the window and I actually listened to all of your YouTube comments. Huh? DuPont wires? Arduino Uno? <sighs> so a company called Elegoo gifted me an Uno starter kit so that I could build my first prototype. So here it is, my very first prototype, super fragile, on a breadboard <laughs> about to fall apart. I used the Uno, finally, DuPont cables, definitely not saying that right, and this little turbidity sensor that I got from Amazon. Why did I decide to go with this contraption that's about to fall apart? Well, really all I'm doing is testing this thing from Amazon. I was able to use this entire kit to just create the infrastructure to test this little sucker. So, let's go test it. So apparently the sensor is bouncing around zero and one before it's submerged into drinking water. And then it says two and a half, <laughs> around between two and two and a half. Even though the World Health Organization recommends that drinking water have an NTU of less than one prior to disinfection. So here we go, about to drink two and a half NTU water. Tastes pretty clean. Mm. You know what I'm feeling now? I think it's time for a coffee. If there's one thing that I love in this world, it's coffee. Okay, so it looks like our coffee is around 16 NTU. However, now the baseline is not at zero NTU, so air and clear water should be at zero. Um, but it's hovering around three. There's definitely an offset to the coffee measurement. But I'm kind of feeling this fall weather right now, so maybe we should just do ourselves a favor and go get a pumpkin spice latte and see if we get a higher or lower NT value. Hello, I, as promised, have a pumpkin spice latte right here. I've already drank most of it because um, yeah, it's good and I understand why people like it. So let's try dipping the sensor into the pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice latte has an NTU value of around 36. Very interesting. So we're at the bar. This is a Hedis beer. And now we're gonna test the sensor at the bar. Okay. Okay, so I am a big clown because it says 3,000 NTU. <laughs> so clearly something is broken. Probably my brain. <laughs> 
It doesn't taste like 3000 NTU though. <laughs> it doesn't look like it either. <laughs> okay, I have the sensor right here. <laughs> Gonna try not to drop everything in the river. Also probably would have been a better idea if I just brought like a water bottle and took the water out of the river. But next time. Oh, 30. It's 30. You're just gonna have to believe me, folks. Folks, I may or may not have accidentally dipped this a little too far into the water. So I'm gonna go dry it out and see if we can keep testing it. So I had a lot of fun actually just running around playing with the sensor, dipping it into everything. I also wanted to dip it into the toilet, but then I thought that was disgusting. <laughs> And I would like to keep this sensor and keep testing more and more different liquid items. But from a more serious point of view, the values, I don't even have to compare them to a real turbidity sensor because I know that they're completely wrong. As you can tell in some of the clips, there was just way too much noise when this turbidity sensor is just out in the open and not in water. The value is bouncing anywhere between 0 and 2 NTU. Not very accurate. I have to buy a multimeter and see where the noise is coming from. Is it coming from the Arduino? Is it coming from the actual sensor probe? Is it from all of my terrible breadboard connections? I don't know. So getting a multimeter I think would be the first step to determine where the noise is coming from. So that's first, eliminating the noise. Second thing I would want to do is do real testing, so as I already mentioned, comparing the values of the turbidity meter against values of a real turbidity meter <laughs> and seeing how off they are. And then also, I didn't mention this, but when I got this turbidity probe off of Amazon, it was actually broken because like basically you have to calibrate it. And in order to calibrate it, there's like a little screw in here. So basically you tighten and loosen the screw in here so that when the sensor is out in the atmosphere, it is reading 4.21 or 1.9 volts. However, when I opened this up, it was broken. So what I did was I kind of made a makeshift by myself by having the five volts from the Uno go into this uh, 10K potentiometer, and then I adjust the potentiometer so that the voltage going through here is at, as you can see here, I'm trying to get it to zero NTU, but it's so incredibly finicky. If I just touch this ever so slight, I haven't even touched it and it's already changing. Okay, let's see, watch. I'm not even gonna, I'm just gonna wiggle it. Okay, now I'm just gonna try to turn it. Okay, it's at 160 NTU. So the turbidity probe that I got from Amazon was broken and I think it would be worth it to test more dishwasher turbidity probes before I just completely said all dishwasher probes are terrible and I'm just gonna build my own. But I think that's being a little dramatic because it's gonna take a lot of optics so I'm gonna test some more dishwasher probes before I just completely throw the entire collection of dishwasher probes into the trash. And then the fourth thing I wanna do in the future is also test it in different conditions because dishwasher probes are actually used in the dishwasher where there's no light. So I kind of have a theory actually that stray light coming in affects the detector on the probe and I didn't test this theory. So this was just a fun video of me testing this broken probe everywhere, but I think I need to make a more rigorous engineering approach to this fun little experiment. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and let me know if you have any other suggestions to add to my future testing schedule. In order to avoid me creating like clickbait type trash YouTube content, 
Um, I would really appreciate if you turn on the bell because then that tells the YouTube algorithm or whatever that you actually want to see my content. And then it will serve you my content every two weeks when I post a new video. So please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Ciao for now.